Welcome to Excel Metric number 1309. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Metric 1307 to 1311 to follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to take a unique list of names and list them in a single cell. Now, this is going to involve an array formula. And since we want to list all the things in a single cell, we're going to use the new Excel 2016 text join function. If you have Excel 2016 and Office 365 and you're part of the Insider program, you will have this function. Now, this formula comes from Bill Sizzes at YouTube, and it is amazing. Now, when we're trying to get a unique list of numbers, we can use the frequency function. If it's a unique list of text items, then we want to try to use the match function. Now, normally, the match function will look up a single item and tell you the relative position. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to give the lookup value every single name. This is a function argument array operation because we're giving it however many items. This is the match function will spit out that many answers, which for us will be relative positions, comma. Then we give it the lookup array, the range of values to actually look up. And because there's duplicates and we only want to find the first one, we do comma and exact match. That way, match will only find the first one. Now, if I evaluate this with F9, notice 1, 1. That first two found a 1, but so did the second one. Now, look at this array here. 1. Yes, that's the first position. Two, that's the first position. But that one is in the third position. So Control-Z. If I have a way to compare this to all the relative positions, meaning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I would get a true for 1 equals 1. But here, 1 would not equal 3. Well, creating an array of relative positions is easy. We can use the row function, and I give it a function argument array operation. Right now, row would give us 5, 6, 7, and I don't want that. So I'm going to subtract from that array of 5, 6, 7. I'm going to subtract yet another row. But here, we'll just give it a single cell. Now, normally, I click in 5, which means we'd get a 5 in the first number in the array here, minus 5, which would be 0. And normally, that's the most robust way to do this. If you don't have field names at the top, which are actually part of this whole data set. So watch this. I'm going to actually click on the cell above. Now, 5 minus 4 is 1. And so for each number in this array, 5, 6, 7, 8, it will always be subtracting 4. Now, actually, that is a trick I learned from Bill Scissors. And you don't want to do it this way. You usually want to subtract the first item in the actual range and then add 1 to be more robust. But if you really have a proper data set and that field name is not going anywhere, that is an awesome little formula construction. But that little bit right there, if I highlight this in F9, that will give me an array of relative positions, Control-Z. And this, of course, when I highlight this in F9, gives us that array. So 1 will match 1, 2 will match 2, but 1 will not match 3, Control-Z. Now if I highlight this whole thing or just keep the cursor at the end in F9, there's an array of trues and falses that tell us when it encounters the first item, sue, mo, and so on, control Z. Now I'm going to put this inside of the if function. Logical test has an array of trues and falses, comma. So in the value of true, I'm simply going to put the names I want. And for value if false, since I do not want false, I'm going to type a comma and put Double quote, double quote. That'll put a zero length text string in there or nothing. Now close parentheses and let's evaluate the entire formula so far, F9. And there it is, a unique list of items with zero length text strings or most formulas will consider that an empty cell. So now we have what we want. We put this inside of text join. The delimiter, whatever you want in double quotes, I'm going to use a comma and a space, comma. And this is where we want to ignore empty cells or those zero length text strings. So I put true or leave it omitted. Now when I come to the end, that text thing, right, 
is the whole if. But when I come to the end and close parentheses, now if I evaluate this with the F9 key, there's my unique list. Now those commas, when I enter this with Control-Shift-Enter, will not show up. Control-Z. And this formula right here, we have a huge array operation here, an array calculation. So we have to use Control-Shift-Enter. Ready? Control-Shift and Enter. And there it is. From this data set, we have listed a unique list inside this cell. If I change this to min, Enter, now we have an updating unique list of names. Control Z. Now, that's a pretty cool formula here, but let's take this one step further. Oftentimes, we have the Excel table feature, which automatically expands. So as we add new records and we get new names, we want those to show up in our cell. Now, I've already named this table and given it a good name. There it is, F sales. So you ready? Equals if match. And we're going to put function argument array operation. And notice the table formula nomenclature there. Table name, field name in square brackets, comma, the array, that's the same, comma. Match type is 0, close parentheses. And now on the match, I'm going to say, are any of you equal to, in parentheses, row of that same table name and field name, close parentheses, minus. And watch this. This is cool. If you click on the header, notice it has the actual table name, but then the table formula nomenclature for headers. So that, in essence, will be 18 minus 17, right? Close parentheses. And now I need to add an orange close parentheses right there, so close parentheses. And now I want to click on Logical Test and hit F9 to evaluate that. Sure enough, there's our array of trues and falses indicating when it's encountered the item for the first time. Control Z, come to the end, comma, value of true, those are our names, comma. And now double quote, double quote, close parentheses. Now we are going to run into a problem, and the problem is this. When I add a new record here, if I use tab, it's going to be empty for a second. And so I actually want to add one more logical test on this whole array. So right before this if, I'm going to put another if. I'm going to say if this whole range right here is not, and not is less than, greater than, and then I'm going to use double quote, double quote. So if it's not empty, comma, then please put that whole if, and I'm going to come to the end, because the second if is our value of true. And I still need to comma and then double quotes, double quotes for the second value of false, close parentheses. Now, if I F9 on this, I get the same thing. But those double quotes, double quotes will be ignored by text join, control Z. Now we can use text join the delimiter, double quotes, comma, space, double quotes, comma, true to ignore empty cells or leave it omitted comma, and then I come to the end, close parentheses, and now Control, Shift, and Enter. And there we go. Now, when I come down to the bottom, and I'm going to hit Tab to add a new record, Gigi just sold 430 bucks, And there it is, an expanding list. Now, actually, a few times I tried this, I did Control, Shift, Enter. And I would get extra commas. And when I would do Control, Shift, Enter a second time, they'd go away. So actually, I think there is something unusual going on between text join and maybe the table feature or something. But I can't seem to duplicate it in a consistent way. If anyone else tries this formula on a table, Control, Shift, Enter, and gets those extra commas, or sometimes when I came and went tab, the commas would show up. But uh, anyway, that is pretty cool. Yet another amazing use for text join, both with the Excel table and with a straight, proper data set. All right, thanks to Bill Sizzes. We'll see you next trick.